Hi, this is Cheryl, and thank you for clicking on my video, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm showing you how I create a abstract art piece using my scrap glass and other bits and pieces of um, things, such as flat marbles and some artisan glass pieces that I bought and I have a pendant in there and a glass lampwork glass leaf in there um, but what I do is I will take my scrap glass and play around with it till I get an idea in my head and then I work with it and put something together in this piece I am using the um, steel fences or I think they're made out of aluminum and it's going to be five by six um, inch piece and uh, just play around with the pieces until I get something that I like and in this video we're going to go through some of it very quickly because it's a very long video I am currently fo foiling <clears throat> my pieces but before I did that I took every piece and I will grind the edges of every piece, clean them, and then start with the foiling. The foiling, you want to make sure you get your foil in the center of each piece and make sure that the front and the back are about the same size in um, depth of um, the front face foiling. This piece here is the artisan piece I was talking about. I bought this from an Etsy art artist and it was um, a nice art piece or gla glass piece they look like jellyfish <clears throat> so I play with my pieces and I fit them up and some of the pieces I will trim back as I'm doing here around the flat marble trimming up a couple of pieces, cutting them on my glass grid, which is on the left side, and placing them in my piece. If they're good, then I'll go on the right side and I grind the edges and then I'll foil them. So I'm jumping ahead so that uh, this video will not be super boring. I'm basically showing you how I work with the glass. So in this particular area, I'm trying to use the flat piece against the fence and fitting up the uh, pieces that are there already with this piece working, playing around with the, the glass until I get it the way I like it. So I'm using different pieces, placing them in there. See, I like that. Uh, kind of like that, but I still have a <clears throat> piece there that's uh, blank, you know, a space. So I'm trimming these pieces, these couple pieces up to fit into the uh, piece, marking them with my silver sharpie marker. So you'll see I take that piece that I want to fit up against the fence and I make it fit by marking the areas that I need to cut. The lower ones need to be cut in half and the top one it needs to be trimmed back a bit here and there. So I went and cut them and I fit them up and I ground the edges and foiled them and we're jumping ahead to the yellow pieces. Now if you have a really long skinny piece such as the one I'm doing now, I will trim back the fo foil on the front edge to expose more of the stained glass. And you'll see in a minute after I burnish them, the, the piece, 
that I will take my X-Acto blade and I will trim back the front face of the foiling to expose the glass more. So every piece gets ground, even the flat marbles, so that the foil will adhere to the glass better. Here I'm playing around with some of the uh, pieces around the yellow marble. going through and finishing up my foiling. You want to make sure that your foiling is burnished to the glass really well uh, so you don't have any like air spaces which will show up in your soldering. The uh, foiling is your foundation for your solder work, so you want to make sure it's done properly. <clears throat> and there's a little space. I went back to my scraps, found a piece that works, trimmed it back, fit it in, round it, and foiled it. So now for my like three-dimensional pieces, you have to be creative on how you want to attach them to the, the work, such as the fish and this glass leaf. Now I am foiling the glass leaf, and when I do, I am burnishing it, and I am taking my clay tool and pushing it into the leaf's indentations so that it becomes part of the leaf. When I go to solder it, the solder will be um, around the entire leaf and will, will look like it's part of the leaf. Same as with the fish, I went around certain pieces of parts of the fish and foiled them and I went completely around them. So here I did some flux work, uh, I put a little flux here and there all the little connection points and I am just connecting my pieces um, with the solder with a dot of solder just to adhere all of the pieces together into one so I can take the fence off and, and be able to solder the piece uh, more easily with the fence off. So we're moving forward and doing the solder work in the front and the first thing we want to do is just tin everything on the front and make sure we fill all of the seams with solder. I'm not looking for perfection at this point, I'm just putting the piece together and filling the piece with solder where it needs to be filled. So you see, you can incorporate other things into your stained glass work, such as the little pendant on the bottom uh, is being has been foiled on the edges, and now I'm soldering it into the piece, and it becomes part of the artwork. So you can be creative with what you put into your art pieces by looking around and see what you have in your drawers and what you have uh, laying around that you haven't used for jewelry or whatever. And this piece is entitled Dark Water. I wanted to uh, take the green pieces at the bottom to uh, represent seagra uh, seagrass on the bottom and I've got my artisan pieces which 
look like jellyfish and I've got my marbles in there, my half marbles, the light blue and the dark blue to represent bubbles, the big white one kind of put in there, I kind of put in like a, almost like a, a wave, of course this is an abstract piece so it's just use your imagination. So now I'm doing the um, solder work on the back and this I'm going to be a little bit more particular about because once this is done I don't want to go back to it. So I fill my gaps and get my solder work done, try and do some um, nice bead work with the solder. I'm looking for a nice rounded bead of solder that's smooth. Let me know if you uh, would like to see a full version of this. It would take a very long time to watch and might, might get a bit boring watching. I could put a whole version of the video up. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm fluxing the interior parts, all the little bits and pieces that have copper showing. They all need to be tinned. Tinning all the inside edges of my little gaps here and there, making sure all the copper is completely covered. And do my edges, holding my piece uh, perpendicular to the surface so that I Get a nice rounded bead around the edge of the piece and letting gravity help me get a nice bead on the edge. Otherwise the solder might drip off. Cleaning my surface up a bit. I have the towel down because the front face of the piece has some three-dimensional uh, bits and you know the marbles and whatnot um, so it helps support everything so that uh, I can continue to solder the back of it without having to worry about some of the smaller pieces sagging to get some nice smooth uh, solder work going. This is in super fast speed so it does take a long time to do this. Don't go, go fast. Take your time with it. So now I'm cleaning up my solder work and trying to get some nice bead beading going on, on my front piece, front of the piece. And I have to fit my fish up in there. So once I did my solder work around it, now I'm going to solder him in. Figure out how you want it. Place some flux on the copper pieces or the copper foil. And hook your little fish up into the art piece. I have three points of contact on this fish. The upper fin, his front nose, and the back tail. Now, like I said before, the copper went completely around these portions of the fish. So I do need to solder the back of the fish too. the copper there it needs to be soldered and that's also another point 
of contact where you can really get that fish adhered to the piece. Fish is now part of the art piece. And <clears throat> there's my lamp worked glass leaf. And I need to get the leaf tacked first. Put some flux on there. And tacking it in first the points of contact with the art piece and then I will tin it and make sure all the copper is covered Sorry, it's a bit off camera. As I work, I tend to forget the cameras. I've only got a certain amount of space that will record. And I'm tinning up the edges of the leaf. Okay, so now the leaf is part of the piece. So here I'm doing some embellishment work. I'm adding what to me represents bubbles. Drips of water on the leaf. I'm taking bits of solder and gently releasing the bit of solder to the art piece. Here and there. This is the fun part where you can be creative and make it look more organic. Now this um, embellishment work helps hide the loop at the top of the what was originally a pendant and incorporate it into the piece. No one ever know that it was a pendant. So there's where I'm at at the moment. Get a good look at it. 
now I'm going to start adding some wire embellishment work. And I'm using my nylon pliers to straighten out my wire. I'm using 18 gauge copper wire and it does not have a coating. It will not work if there's a coating on your wire. So I'm going to take my flush cutters and make a straight cut. There's a flat end on your flush cutters that you want to use so that it's a nice flat cut on the copper and I'm using my hands to warm the copper up and bend it the way I want. I took round nose pli uh, pliers and curled the end in tightly on one end and then I'm loosely twisting the wire on the other end. And I'm making a water wave. And I have three points of contact for that piece. Again, I'm going to do it again. Twist it nice and tight on one end and on the other end. I will loosely curl it in and make another water wave. Now think about where you want to place your pieces because you know you want it to be a desirable look. You know, in this particular area, I'm filling in what will be what would be a very um, plain area as opposed to the rest of the piece. Just adding a little bit of interest to that area. So that's my wave that I am creating up top. Sort of placing them where I want them. You have to make sure that there's points of connection with the previous solder work. Okay, getting ready to solder them in. Put a little bit of flux at your points of connection for now. Place it where you want it. And gently add a tack of solder those points so it won't move on you. So then you want to take some flux and flux the rest of the piece and tin it.
other one over top of the first one. And I'm not worried about the drips that happen because it adds interest to my piece, so I'll probably just leave that drip there. So if you made it through this far of my video, I thank you for sticking with me. And please hit the like button and share the video with others. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that now because uh, then you won't miss out on my future videos. Click the bell so that you can get some notices when my new videos come up. In the comment section below, please let me know what you liked about the video, what you didn't like about the video. I'm interested to hear what you think. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below as well. And I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. All the materials that I'm using will be in the description uh, below. This art piece will be for sale on my website, artbycherylann.com, as well as other stained glass works and my jewelry works and my painting works. They're all, they're all up there. So this piece I tacked in and I didn't like where it was so I took my pliers and just bent it where I wanted it. Put it down. So you can tack in one end and manipulate it uh, to how you want it after you tack in the first end. So now I'm adding bubbles and hiding some of the things that um, need to be corrected, such as the very top of the fish has a loop that it was originally meant for jewelry, and I put bubbles there, so he doesn't look like jewelry anymore. He looks like a fish swimming in my dark water abstract art piece. I decided I needed another wave. That looks good there. And we flux it and do the same thing. 
tack first and then tin. I had fun putting this piece together. So now I go in the back and just make sure all my copper is covered. Clean up anything that may have been heated up and doesn't look right from the top. cleaning up some of the soldering. So get creative with your glass pieces. Have fun putting them together. Make something unusual. Now we're gonna put the hangers on. I have two round tinned pieces of copper that I formed into loops. And I'm making sure that they're closed. And the seam part of the loop is towards the soldering end. Make sure that they're equal in where you place them from the ends. Flux. And you want to tack them in. So these are some more of the artisan pieces that I bought from Etsy and I'll put a link at the bottom to the artist that did them so you can buy pieces for yourself. These are some more pieces that I have that I'll use in future videos. tack it first and it's best to let it cool because you they can be fiddly and tricky because if you heat it up too much they'll fall off or fall out of place so now I'm putting a little more solder in It's best not to heat them too much. Let them cool. Now I turn it over and I'm going to reinforce with more solder.
your time with it. Just adding a few little embellishments here. And once the solder gets hardened, I also make the solder that's holding those um, jump rings look like they're part of the piece by making them organic looking. So at the end here, I added another piece of um, wire work to this corner that I'm working on. You'll see on the right hand side, I put another vine in. This is the piece as it stands now. Join me for the next video to see how I patina this art piece. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button and share my video with others. Thanks. Join me in the next one.